Hi, we Bob here, and do you love Harry Potter? Well, this week we are going to be looking at how to draw this version of Hogwarts and using the watercolour features in Rebel. Uh, I did speed up this process this week rather than doing it in real time because a lot of the drawing was with pencil or digital pencil, which in real time is very slow. So I decided to go here with a normal A4 landscape paper using the hot pressed paper canvas type. To start with, I was using a watercolour reference that I found online of this image and decided um, later on to look at something else which we'll get to about the middle of this video and I'll, you'll see what I've used as a reference at that point. But I decided um, to start with using the perspective tool to get some help to look at doing perspective buildings in a two-point perspective. To get this tool, we can use the edit menu and then select perspective or a quicker way is to use the shift key and the letter P on your keyboard. Now if you've only got one point perspective you'll need to change it using the little menu that appears once you choose the perspective tool and change it to two point perspective and you can get other three point and so on perspectives to help you with your drawing. I then tend to think about a building in 3D shapes and the box shape so even if a box even a building is a, a cylinder, we can make a box around the cylinder and then draw the cylinder in it. Um, and this way I've got an idea of where the buildings are sitting in 3D space just by drawing them. And it helps me to sketch it this way and use the perspective tool just to get those lines going always to the same vanishing points. Again, I've got videos on perspective tool on the channel if you want to check them out. But this drawing is not meant to be precise unless you want it to be. Maybe you're trying to go for that architecture look. But many of the shapes here are repeating shapes and it should be noted like for example the side of the building. As those shapes get repeated further away you need to leave less space between them because that's what happens in real life if you're looking at a fence. You may be able to see each slat individually as it um, is closer to you and then as it gets further away those merge together and uh, just the way that perspective works in the real world. I've got to this point where the drawing is more or less a point I'm like okay with and I wanted to check out some of the other details. To do this I recently for my birthday bought Hogwarts Legacy the game on PC. With my new PC that I bought to help me with Rebel I can now play games like Hogwarts Legacy which is really cool. And the graphics and feel of the game are amazing as you can see. We can use this game to get more details about our chosen subject matter and this is where if you chose a subject like Hogwarts, like Harry Potter, getting a game can really help you. You can then get into all the assets and get a 3D look around them. It gives you a very good perspective about um, how you could draw something in that world or whether it be Spider-Man game or whatever. And I have talked about using games in another video on my channel as well. So it's worth a think, it's worth looking at, um, capturing some data from your, your PlayStation 4 or whatever and then using that to get your reference. You can even do things like Red Dead Redemption where you can use the photograph version. But let's move on here. So just to say thanks to everyone who likes these videos, it's really much appreciated. There's affiliate links to Equipment and the Rebel software that I use um, in the description. But I'm now going to talk in real time, this bit's been a bit scripted, I'm now going to move over to the watercolour process, talk about it in real time. Okay, so this bit's live and so I'm just going to go over to the watercolour and we're going to scoot down. And what it is, I've made a custom brush and I've made quite a few custom brushes and I'm going to put this specific one into the description. It's a wash brush and they go to my proper layer, a new layer. And turn on the layer below, which is my pencil drawing. So to do the clouds, I'm going to go with a cobalt blue. And like I said, this is a custom brush that I've created to help me get cloud shapes and as you can see, it gives me quite um, cloudy type texture to my paint. 
we can go behind the lines here, it's not a big deal, because then you can end up with a kind of halo look if you keep trying to avoid going in and about the lines. Thankfully in digital art, we can just delete stuff. So then I'm changing to the razor version, and not the opacity a bit, and this helps me to then just shape some clouds into that skyline. Might want to up the water as well, try and get some of this texture coming through, which we can do with the texture influence. Turn that up a wee bit. Um, I'm actually not going to redraw these clouds, I'm just going to give them some water, which I can do by turning the opacity pretty much right down, and the water up. Now I'm going to grab my keyboard so that I can fast dry if I need to. You can see some of the water colour effect taking place anyway. Let's see what this does. See if it's going to give me these water walls a wee bit, but hey, that's it's meant to look like watercolour, so let's see how we go. Turn off the tilt, which is up here. Again, we can just jump between different things. Make sure you are trying to blend that you've got the opacity up. And we've got our cloud looking sky, which I'm quite happy with. And then just going to change to this flat wash that I've also got. Now you should have a flat wash one as default and I just choose that one and I'm going to go and look at zooming in a wee bit here so you can see a bit up close. Check what my water is, I'm just going to reset this now and I'm going to turn the water up a wee bit more, turn the tilt down. Now somebody did mention in the comments, I think it was Richard, said about if I hold down the shift key I can get this tilt to move in 15 degree increments, so hold down the shift key to do that. It's a wee bit too blue, yeah I might want to add in some some grey and I'm starting to also lose my pencil but that's because my pencil's on the layer below so we need to actually move that up the way, need to make sure I'm in the right layer. And then we're not going to affect the underneath parts. So when I'm doing my kind of basic wash here, just to make the value stand out from the background, to bring the castle out from the sky, it's relatively dark kind of opacity on this grey. So while we're drawing, while we're painting, the watercolour effect doesn't take, um, doesn't simulate when we're drawing. It pauses. I'm going to make this a uh, over the top of this roof area, again with darker, against just above a layering effect. So with these turrets I'm trying to show a shadow. Again I've got my hand on the fast try or the F key. So F does that for you. And you're trying to get a cone shape so when you draw cone going to be darker on this side and it's going to get gradually lighter. Again I'm just thinking where the shadows are, where they would be and then trying to get my paint to show the kind of darker parts of the drawing and the lighter parts. I'm going to go even darker for these areas inside the arches actually be better bringing up the opacity to do this. If you see this little symbol appearing that's me hitting the F key. So if I move that reference image in fact I'll just close that because I'm not using it. You see the wee fast dry symbol up here. And our Hogwarts is starting to come together so I'm just going to darken these areas a wee bit kind of flown off the roof, you sometimes see kind of stains coming down. And then we get to our, our rocks, our cliff edge, and we're just trying to kind of show an area where the light is hitting and the darkness is falling. Again, don't try and be too precise about this. Also let the watercolour do its thing. So it looks more like watercolour. Zoom out a wee bit. 
we can see our castle standing out from the, the blue sky. We may even want to grab some of that kind of blue colour because would, there would be some reflection of the sky onto the actual castle. And equally we can add in white so we're going to have some windows here which are going to be reflecting against the sun. Again just adding in some highlights for the rocks. Again rocks are a bit ununiform so don't try to be too precise. Or even bring up the water and get some of the water colour effect helping us. Just trying to see if we can bring up some of the texture influence. See some of that texture influence coming in the effect there. And if you just add in, once you've put the texture influence up, you'll find that these, the texture starts to come through a lot better. So what about the drips? And what we're going to do is we're going to dry the layer. We're going to make sure drips are on. Let's leave them at that size. And what I would do is just come in and start putting some high opacity stuff in on the water really quite high. What you may want to be careful of is re-wet and you may want to bring that down a lower value. Let's see what happens. I'm kind of just playing this one by ear. I have a dark part here and that should hopefully result in some drips for us. Sometimes I wish you could add a bit more randomness to the drips. The texture influence helps out because it is actually running through the texture. So if I zoom right in, I'll need my nano pixel is on, you can see it's running through the texture. It's, there's darker parts or the darker parts of the texture where it's grabbing that. So you want your texture influence up to get that nice kind of dappled effect. go for something different for my eraser here. Now this line along the bottom is quite straight. I don't really like that. Let's try and bring that down a bit. Now that looks a bit better. Um, so you can enhance it whatever way you want. So hopefully this video has been of use to you. Thank you very much for watching and Wee Bob is out.